um, long-time panelist, first-time moderator, so sorry if this is uh, if I'm a little green. Um, but I'm I'm really stoked to be here today discussing this because I think it's a really important issue. Um, I think Jonas has already partly covered that we, as a collective in this room, are where the party's powering the open web, and we have this issue that we're faced with, and there's not a clear solution. Privacy is king and our entire world is going to be changing over the coming years. JJ's touched on GDPR, California law, um, our more locally, our recent reports from the ACCC, they're keeping us all accountable, making sure that marketers, publishers, agencies and anyone that owns data um, are really held accountable to consumers and consumers' choices and preferences. And, and part of the reason why we have this problem is because the walled gardens and their persistently logged in audiences means that they're not faced with this issue. And so we've got a real uphill battle to face. And so as JJ's talked about, you know, we're facing a future where the cookie's going to begin to be rendered all but useless and it's gonna have a really significant impact on marketing effectiveness and for data owners' ability to monetize the data that they have. And so to, contrib con to contribute to the discussion, um, four really awesome panelists here today, all really unique perspectives on identity, which I think as part of this conversation is incredibly important to make sure that we're not all actually saying the same thing and coming from the same perspective because we need to have a healthy debate about what the future looks like. And um, so I'll let them all introduce themselves and explain why this particular issue is so important to them. Everybody, am I on? Yeah. I'm on. Uh, Garrett McGrath, I'm part of the product team at Rubicon Project. Uh, my team takes care of a lot of things at Rubicon, but me personally, I'm very involved in identity and privacy and exactly what you were just talking about. Um, <clears throat> it's germane to everything we do in terms of the open web, and um, I'm happy to be here and try and help out. Hi, I'm Amelia Ward, head of digital for PhD Sydney. Um, as somebody who works at a media agency, obviously, um, you know, the, the change in, in, in cookie limitations and um, the use of them is really important to us because, um, you know, it's our job to help our clients navigate all these changes and navigate the market. Um, so it's been a really interesting, um, I guess, topic that we've been working on this year. Um, and what we're really trying to understand at PhD is what are those kind of short-term and long-term implications of these changes, um, not just for us as an agency, but particularly for our clients. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Natalia, I'm the country manager of uh, LiveRev. Um, I think uh, this is so important to me because there's been a lot of fear around what this means for us as an industry, um, but I think we need to kind of twist that perspective and understand that this actually presents us an opportunity to do a lot of things um, a lot better. So that might be better identity, better consumer-first advertising, and I think that um, being really active in the conversation uh, means that you know, we have an opportunity to change and influence the direction that that's going. Uh, hi, I'm Matthew Daniel. I'm now a consultant, used to work at IAG. Um, I've done a lot of work with, with trying to do marketing effectiveness in terms of, you know, what, what, what works and what doesn't work. And I think uh, around the cookies specifically, um, it's more around privacy and consent. Um, I believe context is back, contextual marketing is back. And I think that that's what the point of view I'll be trying to present today. Awesome. So I'll, um, I'll jump into our first topic. So as Matt's already mentioned, at, at the heart of the challenges that we're facing really is the consumer. And everything that we're being faced with is really designed to improve the consumer experience overall and make sure that the consumer is empowered with choice and control. And so I'm really interested to know what you think about how we ensure that any solutions that we deploy don't actually threaten that objective and continue to respect the consumer in the future. Yeah, I think uh, it's while we've provided flexibility and we've provided a lot of options for a consumer to opt out of cookies um, in, in, in GDPR and Europe and stuff like that, they, they present the option in front of them, but they just always click yes and they go up front. They don't know what they're giving up. Um, so if they don't know what they're giving up, uh, you don't know the trade-offs that are associated with it. So an education thing, a piece needs to be done, but the education piece... It shouldn't be done by us. It should be done by the, by probably the government regulators who are, who are enforcing this type of thing. Um, you know, and when my dad kind of tries to explain what I do, he says, he says, <laughs> oh, oh, you know the ads that follow you around on the internet? Um, yeah, yeah, that's him. 
And so, so it, while, while it's, it was kind of true for a little bit, um, there's an association that the consumer has caught on to some of the uh, malpractices of what, we're, what we've been doing. So there's sort of, we, uh, there was, has been malicious intent sometimes, and, and we're now paying for that. I believe privacy is, is coming for the forefront for a reason, and we just kind of have to prepare for that. Um, and if you, uh, consumers are now uh, being more aware of what they're giving away, um, and we need to make sure that the trade-offs um, are in their favour um, and in the advertising favour as well. Does anyone else have anything to add? Yeah, consumer empowerment? Yeah, I would say not necessarily malicious intent, um, but I would agree with you that you know retargeting is probably responsible for a lot of what's going on, uh, and, the, and the consumer perception. Um, it's interesting to talk about regulators trying to help consumers understand what's going on. That's a that's a tall order, um, and you know I, I, maybe there was some malicious intent. I think for a long time it was just a matter of it was possible you could make that ad follow people around, and you got paid a lot. Um, Maybe I'll change it to unintended consequences. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But I would 100% I would agree that, you know, I think GDPR is great, I think CCPA is great, I think they're all very, very complex, and they're making our, our lives difficult, but they need to be. Um, but in giving consumers choice and power and taking it away from these black boxes that they simply can't understand is, is what we need to do. I think, uh, yeah, sorry, I, go. I, think um, I agree that it's not just up to the regulators as well to influence, um, you know, the interpretation of law and, and obviously to a degree, but um, practically as brands, as publishers, um, you need to be really straightforward with what you're taking from a consumer and what they're giving to you. <coughs> so um, that's not necessarily up to a regulator to tell you how to write your privacy policy. That's up to you to make sure that um, any language that lives in that is explicit and obvious, and the onus is on you for that. Um, I was just going to add that, um, obviously, consumers become more aware of their data footprint over time. That's really what we've seen happen. Um, and that's why you see the rise of, you know, ad blocking happened, obviously. Um, but also now subscription services. So people are working out that, um, that it's... But I guess the issue is we, we, as a market, never really did this big education job about, hey, ad-funded content versus paid-for subscription-based content, you as a consumer have a choice between these two different you know, um, pathways. And nobody's ever really blatantly come out and said that, and it's just sort of happened naturally over time. I actually listened to like a podcast or something, and um, some, you know, just happened to be Americans, got asked um, about, you know, paying for content. And they said, I already pay for my internet service provider, so my content should already be paid for. And it's like, no, that's your nope. technology. The content is a whole other thing. But I think that never really happened overtly. And I think that's where this has kind of come about. Yeah, I mean, we're all victims of our, our own success. Correct. Because of the scale this has all reached. You know, my, my father is convinced that a cookie actually knows things about him. Yes, yeah. that it's not and anonymized it's, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it, it's, it knows his home address and his shoe size, yeah. and it, it might know that. Yeah. But, <laughs> Education is key. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So many of the solutions that are currently being worked on across the industry are really focused on addressing that the, the changes that we're facing immediately today. And so I guess I wonder if we're at risk of just simply solving for the current restrictions that are being enforced by browsers and operating systems and are we actually just going to be faced with all of these problems all over again when those technologies inevitably catch up mm -hmm. um, to prevent the deployment of new solutions that we develop? Mm -hmm. So how do you think we should be mitigating for this? Yes, we're solving for the immediate problems. Um, <clears throat> it's really difficult to get a large group of people to do something, uh, change their behavior and change their technology. You know, it costs money and time and effort unless you're compelled to do that. If, 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 uh, if cookies actually go away, and, and these days that, that means Chrome, if Chrome blocks third-party cookies, suddenly everyone will change their behavior quickly. You know, the context will, will really be a thing. And, you know, single sign-on or browse, maybe browser IDs will become a thing. It'll, it'll save all of our lives. Um, <clears throat> but until we're all compelled to do that, you know, we're, we're solving for things like the, the, the use of universal IDs. And, and we're having kind of parallel conversations where we need to stop syncing with each other. And if we could just do, get down to two, five, or ten IDs as opposed to 2,000, that would be great. But what if IDs go away completely? And, and they're, two, they're two parallel conversations. And, we're, and a lot of times I feel like they're conflated. So 
yes, we're trying to solve the, the immediate problems we're having. Uh, and the problem is we don't necessarily know the problems we're having. Uh, regulation, regulations are happening just you know, kind of in real time. I'm part of the CCPA problem in California, and it's, you know, it's like, what, what is the definition of a sale of data at the moment? Um, so we're at, we're at risk of having to do this all over again, uh, but uh, I think that's our obligation. I think we need to you know, build systems that consumers can actually understand, um, and we haven't done that yet. I guess for the other panelists, do you think that the need for us to continue to do this over and over again and continue to our, reinvent ourselves over time will actually help to keep us accountable to the consumer? I, I think that as an industry, we've reinvented ourselves over time a million times, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you think about it, it's, it's just the new, newest challenge that we're all facing. Um, I don't think that, you know, like I said, that there's fear around it, but we're never going to stop in our tracks in the way that we're doing things. We're going to find a new solution and um, we, we will reinvent ourselves again and again and, and whatever that is, it will, it will be perpetual and it will keep happening. But um, I, I think that, you know, we're, we're on the right approach now, which is more around, you know, if, if regulations is the issue, then we need to make sure that the issues that we're solving for now um, and the innovation we're taking up now is consumer first and privacy centric. And, yeah, I think we need to be straight faced about the fact that identity needs to be a community asset. Exactly. It's controlled by publishers, yeah. you know, controlled by user or internet users or visitors. It, as it is now, up until up until this point, the concept of identity has sort of become weaponized. Mm -hmm. You know, we're 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 fighting each other, and you've got a better graph or match rate or whatever, and we're we're doing our users a major disservice in doing so. These things often happen in cycles as well. I think we're we're really focused on it now. We may overcorrect. And the regulators may overcorrect, and then over time they'll just kind of balance things out over time. Yeah. But that, that's what I probably probably think will happen. Yeah. Um, like I'm in favour of a cookieless world, but <laughs> like I think yeah, we'll probably overcorrect it They're and then fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would argue that GDPR might, you know, first crack at it might have been a little bit of overcorrection, mm. and um, you know the IB has done a terrific job with with a, the TCF framework, but it's it's complex. And it's complex for users to understand, and it's complex to implement, and version two is more complex, but necessarily so. And I think you're right. I think we'll, we'll find the right place. And with GDPR, that, that I accept button is basically an agreement to like a 60-page document that you're never going to read. <laughs> yeah. And you're also, you, even if you do read it, you don't understand it. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if those two or three consumers that click on the other side of that UI and they see a list of you know, mm. 60, you know, who's Rubicon Project? And, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I mean, pretty much everything that we've talked about so far today has been about continuing to support targeted ad delivery. Mm -hmm. But we're already existing in a world where consumers don't actually have to see an ad if they don't want to, if they're educated enough to understand how to prevent that from happening. Um, they absolutely can. So I guess my question is, are we solving the wrong problem? And should we rather be addressing the issue we have with consumers and advertising more generally? Um, so I think that obviously from what we've been talking about, there has been historically a bit of a lack of focus on the consumer. So where, um, you know, the history of what we've been doing in digital so far has really been about, you know, how do we make money and how do we sell things? And obviously that's key to advertising, right? But there, there was that loss of consumer focus. And now that there is more and more and more of a focus on the consumer and actually putting them first, I think we've already kind of done that job of you know, making sure that ads are less disruptive and less intrusive and that we're actually considering a user experience. You know, you're on a mobile phone, you're reading a news article, you scroll through that ad and it's nice and seamless and it looks great, doesn't piss anybody off, but it does its job, right? So I think that that part of it has actually happened, which is a good thing. Um, I think that kind of the next step is really about focusing, and I think, Matt, someone said it before, about that value exchange. So what are we offering consumers in exchange for their time and attention? What is that, um, I guess, that element that we're going to bring for them to make them understand, you know, a bit more about what it is that we're trying to achieve? And, yes, data is the new oil and all these sorts of things that happen and how can we achieve, um, you know, using the technology that we've got to deliver against targeted ads? Yes, 
Um, there is going to be a move towards contextual advertising. Hello, 2013, I think we're going to be back to. Um, but that's not a bad thing because what it'll do is it'll bring more of a focus back on, you know, key marketing principles, the things that advertising is meant to be all about um, and still work from a digital perspective, that'll all come back into play, um, you know, and we'll be able to use all those marketing theories and practices that we've been using for so long. They'll actually make more sense now. So I think that you overlay all of that, all of that with the, um, you know the identity graphs and the data and the tech that we're using. It's really powerful, um, you know, entity for us to be using. Yeah, we had a theme. The theme today is around um, uh, like creative. Also plays a big part of it. Mm. And, yeah, and, and yeah, and um, the the good thing that cookies did, and it allowed the it allowed everyone to advertise equally. Um, uh, there were some players that could you could afford more spots than others, but it meant that there were way more volume that we could handle. So that meant that the creative got crapper yep. because <laughs> it went more around how much volume can I push out as opposed to what is working and just sticking to that. And mm -hmm. so there's there's adverse effects there. But yeah, I think um, I think the cookies been a little bit of actually a crutch for us to stop innovation in other areas mm -hmm. around things like contextual targeting. So. Um, if you see now, there's because of this world of the cookie going away, things like AI and contextual targeting are starting to emerge, and, and there's so many more advancements in different parts of technology um, and different pieces of technology that we're using because we became so dependent on the cookie, we kind of forgot that we, we innovated within that cookie space, um, but we sort of lost that innovation. And, and particularly, you know what, it's actually particularly for the open internet and, and um, less for some other key dominant players, um, but we lost that ability to innovate of our reliance and that cookie crutch we were on. Yeah, you get anyone together, maybe not in a room this big, and ask, <laughs> and ask them if, if the, the cookie is a good vehicle for identity and are we doing it the right way? And no. no. It's horrible. 100%. Yeah, but we keep doing it because we're not compelled to change or don't need to change. Uh, and so I think the having to do that is great. And context has been brought up several times. I think it probably will come back to a degree. Yeah. And to your point, I think it'll come back with the, the things that, the advances that have been made in machine learning, and yeah. maybe not as far as AI, but you know, in being able to dynamically sort of generate the like, concept of what's appropriate in a privacy safe way is, is exciting. Yeah. You know? yeah, if we stop using people's information and start using context information, yeah. the website, it's yeah. way better. Yeah. I, I don't think it tells the whole picture, but it's <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, it doesn't, but it's, um, it doesn't. You know, it's, it's positive innovation. Well, it's probably when it gets really powerful is when you bring those two things together. And, um, yeah. All right, so our final topic. When this started being something that everyone talked about, um, what, two years, three years ago probably? Yeah. Um, we started seeing these little groups of friendlies around the industry kind of breaking off in order to collaborate to deliver a solution to the problem. Um, and so it means that a lot of these solutions and what we're faced with is that they're being built for very different perspectives. So there might be a group of publishers working together to create an identity solution or a group of agencies or marketers or tech platforms. Um, and so I think, and I think Garrett might have already mentioned it, but you know, we can agree that the future hinges on unanimous agreement and that identity Never mind those other guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that identity really, it, it needs to be a community asset in mm. order for the consumers to retain control mm. and for it, us to go back to the early days of the cookie and an, and an even playing field. And so I'm interested to understand um, from Natalia's perspective in particular, how do we make sure that this actually happens and that the people that contribute to the solution are actually held accountable? Um, look, so I think... Um the fact that there are friendlies breaking off means that that's testament to the, that we know um, we need to come together as a collective to solve for this. So I think firsthand we all know that if um, one kind of player dominates a sector of the market, it causes an imbalance um, across the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I can't speculate on exactly what's going to happen or exact adoption rates. I can say that adoption rates of ID solutions will... Um, just increase as this, you know, as the demise of the cookie becomes even greater and, and things like, you know, Chrome and, you know, Safari, that's, that's all driving that. Um, but I think we all need to be kind of collectively on the same page that what we want is an open and healthy ecosystem um, that isn't dominated by a few players. Um, so I think that if we can all be collectively on the same page around that, then that will um, 
maybe that will drive you know people more into these ID solutions. Um, from a practical point of view, I think anybody who's part of these ID and open solutions um, needs to be held to the highest standards when it comes to security, privacy, um, their support for industry bodies, and I think that's the level of accountability that anybody who's leading or anybody's a part of um, needs to be held to. Yeah, it sounds a lot like the proposal that's come out of the IB recently. Yeah. <coughs> you know, there, needs, there needs to be an accountable, yeah. centralized, or, or maybe decentralized solution yeah. for you know, persisting identity or not based on the, the preference of a user. Yeah, I think, um, I think that the, um, uh, some of the issues that we're having, though, with these collectives that are coming together. So there's a couple of issues when we look at cookies generally. One is um, it going away. But there's also issues around um, what multiple third-party cookies can have, so page loads, and, and, and Jonas was saying it match rates. So all the ID solutions that are coming out are solving for kind of that, you know, that latter part, so match rates and um, page load times, as opposed to what we're going to do when the cookie actually disappears. So I think amongst these collectives, there's still a little bit of work to be done around how we move towards a different model that isn't necessarily just a cookie. Most of those collectives are based on a cookie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. So the collectives are often based on cookies. So it's sort of like, yes, we're all coming together, but... Step one, exactly. set a cookie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we still go back to the cookie, yeah.